Hey everyone, so off the back of the previous video, I had a couple of comments and questions asking me to explain the quad note generator in a bit more detail. And it's definitely worth doing as it's a really interesting device. So I'm gonna try and do a quick off the cuff video before I start work. Um, and hopefully it'll just kind of show you a little bit more about what this device does as it's a really cool tool for just inspiring new ideas and just approaching music making in a bit of a different and unconventional way. So Quad Note Generator takes inspiration from devices that you would normally find in modular synth setups. Uh, and these are devices that kind of just generate music based on different algorithms or formulas or different types of mathematics. Now, as I hinted at in the previous video, Quad Note Generator makes use of something called Euclidean rhythms. I'm not gonna to pretend to understand exactly what they are. Um, although it's a really interesting phenomenon if you do wanna read up on it. Uh, it's basically an algorithm that was discovered a very, very long time ago, I think. Uh, but it's only recently been discovered that a lot of the traditional musical patterns can be found within this algorithm. So the short of it is that whatever you set this pattern number to, it's gonna try and fit that number of notes within a musical measure. So at 16, if I just press a key to trigger the quad note generator, I get 16 notes. And if I set it to 32 notes, I get 32. Now where it gets really interesting is if you set this pattern number to something that isn't exactly divisible by two, four, eight, or 16. So for instance, if I were to set this to 12, that's now generating a more kind of recognizable and musical sort of pattern. And what it's actually doing here is it's using the biggest possible number that it can to divide 12 into this musical measure. So in this case, it's four, and then we get these kind of four groups of three notes and the spaces in between them create a musical rhythm. Now, if we set this to something odd like 13, there's no way that we can divide that within this measure. So it's gonna try and space these out evenly, but the repetition is gonna recur at the end of 32 steps. And this is really cool for kind of more off kilter and progressive rhythms. Now next to the pattern control, we also have these two other controls called vary and bias. So vary, as the name suggests, uh, just adds some variation into the number of steps in the pattern. So at extreme values, it's gonna take this 16 step pattern um, and just randomize it into something completely non-musical. Whereas at lower values, uh, you'll get a more subtle kind of variation that sounds a little bit more deliberate and a bit more musical uh, as though someone was just kind of improvising and playing with the rhythm. The bias control just decides whether or not variation is going to remove notes or add them. So you can use this to control whether or not you want a more sort of sparse feel to your pattern or something a little bit more busy, intricate and complicated. At note length, as you'd imagine, just sets the length of the events as they're triggered. So at the moment, 50% is giving us a bit more of a staccato sound. And we can go all the way up to 200%. Similar to the pattern control, we can introduce some random variants into the length of the notes. So I'll set this to something kind of short, like 40, while also allowing for longer notes to occasionally be triggered. And the same goes for velocity as well. I just need to make sure that the patch in question is responding to velocity to control the amp level. Now, in addition to that, you can also set the number of steps in the rhythm. So let's set this to something more interesting like 21 steps. And then set the number of steps in the pattern to eight. This number is also constrained by the overall global number of steps. So you could have a pattern of 21 steps, repeating every 19 steps, and then fully repeating every 32, or any number down to one. Lastly, you can also use shift to control where in the pattern the sequence is gonna begin.
Oh, and of course, you can also adjust the playback rate as well. So everything from quarter notes up to 128th notes, which could give some really kind of crazy uh, experimental sort of results. But that's enough on the rhythm side of things, as quad note generator also generates pitches. Now at the moment, uh, with very set to zero, the pitch is going to be determined by the key that I play on my keyboard. So you could just use this to do something simple like a bass line that plays 16th notes. But of course, it's more interesting if we start introducing some variation. Now you'll see that there are a few controls here. We have vary, spread, and then a maximum and minimum range. So vary is gonna control how much the pitch should vary from the bass key, which is set by your MIDI input. While spread determines the range of that variation. So at 100%, it's gonna favor notes that are either plus 12 or minus 12 from the bass key. But if I bring spread down, you'll notice that the variation is gonna center more around the bass key. And you can set this maximum and minimum to plus or minus 24. This pitch variation in turn is sent through the output section. So we can either choose a key to quantize everything to, so in this case C minor, or we can use the bass key or the key that you press on your keyboard as the root key of the scale. And of course, there's a whole bunch of different modes that you can use here, or you could just disable scale correction altogether, and then you get this kind of chromatic and more chaotic sound. So you can use these controls in conjunction with the pattern selection and variation to create these self-generating musical patterns. Now quad note generator refers to this pattern or this sequence as a line, and so far we've just been looking at one. But obviously, as the name suggests, quad note generator can generate four lines of music. So I'm gonna turn all of these on, and then you'll see that the controls for each of these lines are completely independent. So they can have uh, different ranges, different patterns, different amounts of variation, and so on. And then of course, these are all passed through the output section for scale correction. So as an example, the first line is going to be set to the bass key, the second will offset by three, the third by five, and the fourth by seven. And now we have this interesting polyphonic pattern using different subdivisions, different offsets from the bass key, but all corrected within the scale of C minor. You can also choose how these four lines interact with each other, again using the output section. So at the moment, Polly is just going to play all four lines at the same time. But you can also do things like choose to prioritize high or low notes. So here you'll see that it's just taking whatever the highest note was that was generated by either of the four lines. Now there are just a couple of other controls uh, on the player that are worth going over before we look at some more useful and musical ways to implement the quad note generator. The first up here is the master vary. And what this is, is a multiplier. So at the moment, anything that we vary, such as pitch or pattern, length or velocity, is gonna be multiplied by 100%, or in other words, whatever you set it to manually. At 200%, it'll be double, and at zero, it'll be nothing. So obviously, if this is set to zero, 200% of zero is still zero. But if I set it to something like, say, 10%, and then bring this master very up, then you'll see that it's just scaling that amount of variation up and down. Now, obviously, you could just do that by grabbing this control yourself. 
So really this is most useful when you have a lot of different variations going on, such as pattern and length and also pitch. So in this way, you're able to bring the pattern backwards and forth between sort of consistent and robotic, all the way up to chaotic and unpredictable. So in this example, I've loaded up a bass patch. And I'm going to begin by setting the overall key to A. And let's try Phrygian. And then I'm going to set my pattern to something a bit more dense. And what I'll do is I'm going to make sure that the pitch, pattern, and timing variation knobs are set to the maximum that I'm willing for them to go. Now what I can do is I'm going to right click the master vary control, and I'm going to assign this to a control on my keyboard. So in this way, at 0%, I can just play a very basic bass progression. And then as I get to the end of a bar or every two or four bars or whatever, I could just increase the amount of variance across all of these parameters. So you can see how that might be useful perhaps in a live or improvisational context where you want things to be a little bit unpredictable and just have these really cool ideas and moments emerge out of the randomness. Now while that randomness and unpredictability is kind of cool, you may occasionally stumble across something that you like and that you want to keep. So in that instance, you can use the freeze controls up here to store a part of this pattern into memory and exclude it from the random note generation. So you'll see that everything outside of this free zone is going to be randomly generated, while the notes that I picked are going to be stored. And this information can be stored either in a patch, uh, or also saved along with the song as well. So to put this into action in a way that's perhaps a little bit more musically useful, um, I've sequenced a pattern here using the drum sequencer, and you'll see that I'm also making use of the probability feature in this as well, so I'm going to get a kind of semi-random drum pattern at the same time as I'm generating these notes. And then over here, I'm just gonna quickly design myself a bass sound and then set chord note generator up to uh, produce or generate something that's kind of sympathetic to that rhythm. So a couple of final things that are worth mentioning. At the moment, this data is just being triggered when I press a key on the keyboard. So naturally I could then record that data onto the sequencer track for the synth. And then obviously any transposition or anything that I do is preserved in that MIDI clip. Now, as I said earlier, you can preserve portions of the pattern that you like using the freeze controls, but another way to do this is to also send to track. So what it's gonna do is it's then gonna bounce this player information down into a MIDI clip. So one thing that you could do uh, if you're kind of searching for ideas, searching for inspiration, is to give yourself a longer range. So let's say 16 bars and then we'll go ahead and send to track. And then you could just go through this MIDI and audition the parts that you like, chop them up, rearrange them, and then that can form the basis for a more permanent bass line. And you'll see that when you bounce the track, the player device is bypassed. So this is a way of kind of extracting, or I guess you could even say curating the ideas that Quad Note Generator produces to give you more control over the notes in your song. Now, as I hinted at in my previous video, you can also stack these player devices in any combination that you want. So for instance, you could place a note echo after the quad note generator. Or 
Or alternatively, what you could do is disable scale correction and then instead use the scales and chords player to define your own scale. So obviously there's a massive number of different combinations that you can use uh, between quad note generator, scales and chords, note echo, and then also additional devices that you can buy in the rack store. One final really cool thing about quad note generator is that it also has back panel connections. And you'll see in this example what I've done is I've taken gate and note outputs from each of the four lines and just connected them to four separate instruments. I've also made sure that the instrument quad note is connected to is turned down, as you have to have an instrument to have a player. And I've also set the output mode to mono high, so it's going to prioritize the highest note across all four of these lines, and then send them to one of the four patches. So with Quad Note Generator, uh, you can do with a single key press what would take a long time to manually program with MIDI across different instruments. And in this way, it's a really fantastic tool for just stumbling across new ideas uh, or kickstarting inspiration, perhaps if you're stuck for a pattern or a phrase or a progression. So I hope this has been a useful kind of overview and introduction to some of the ways that you can use Quad Note Generator. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of different players that come with Reason. And as I said, there's many different ways that you can connect them and use them together on a single instrument. So that's all I have time for for now. Uh, again, if you have anything else that you'd like to see, just pop it in the comments and uh, I'll try and get it done the next time I have a spare hour or so before work. Until next time, thanks for watching.